I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm going to try you over here. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And I, I, I want to tell you the verse is amazing, where he says in the next part, for it is the power of God. The next great miracle in the body of Christ in America is to end our apology tour. We have a right to raise our voice. Help me, somebody. We have a right to speak out. If you're an addict, you need to listen to what I'm saying. If you're suicidal, you better listen to what I'm saying. If you have suffered at the hands of doctor, you need to listen to what I'm saying. I'm not bearing a message that was made up. I'm not representing a system of thought that somebody concocted. This was born in heaven. This was bought by the blood of Christ. This is what caused death to subside and Christ to rise up again on the third day. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God. I'm not getting enough help today. It is the power of God. I'm gonna tell you, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because nothing will heal a marriage like the gospel of Christ. Nothing will get rid of racism like the gospel of Christ. Nothing will step into a human body and break addiction like the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the message. I've seen preachers get invited on talk shows and they hem and haw around. I've never understood that. Are we offering America a false cure? Are we loading people down with guilt? Should we be silent? Listen to the man of God. It was Chuck Colson who said this. For those of you that are younger and never heard the word Watergate, I'm going to bring it up because it bears being brought up. The Watergate break-in went all the way up to the presidency. It was a great shame in our history. And the men who orchestrated it, Ehrlichman, Haldeman, and several others, including Charles Colson, immediately, when indicted, collapsed like a house of cards and admitted their guilt. Chuck Colson was radically converted. Became a, he, he became a mighty man of God. And let me tell you what he said. He said it didn't take but seven days before all the principal people involved in the break-in folded like a house of cards before the prosecution. But he said all 12 disciples at the point of death never denied the power of the gospel. I'm going to go over here for a second. Do you know that in the legal language, there is one confession that is infallible in criminal law, and it is the confession made on the deathbed. Because when you're dying, you don't lie. And when you're breathing out your last breath, you don't tell a lie. You tell the truth. And these men, even before they faced death, just because they were facing prison, recanted, said, no, I was lying. When they're about to be boiled alive, when they're about to be beheaded, drawn and quartered, crucified, upside down, all 12 of the disciples of Christ said, I cannot deny it. I don't care what you do to me. The gospel of Jesus Christ is real. It's real. It's real. And I'm telling everybody watching on television right now, this is not a made-up message. This is real. Somebody shout right now. When I hear a minister has gone for weeks without preaching the gospel, I assume he's a crook. I'm going to say it over here. I'm, I'm borrowing from uh, Harry Truman who said, any politician who gets rich while in office Show me a politician who gets rich while he's in office, and I'll show you a crook. And let me tell you, 
any minister that can go for months without preaching the gospel, show me one of those and I'll show you a crook. Because this message burns in me, overwhelms me, haunts me at night, wakes me up in the morning, causes me to get aside into the prayer room. I fall on my face, I sob before God. I have never been able to plumb the depths of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You say, Mara, how long are you gonna harp on this? For another 50 years, if God lets me, and I'm never gonna stop. Now, the church needs to understand the superiority of our message. If we truly knew what this meant, We would never, ever fear what anybody thought about us when we shared it. Now listen to what I'm going to tell you. What does the power, what does the gospel have the power to do? You say, Mara, this is so simple. Why are you doing it? Because we need it. How many of you don't mind what I'm doing right now? Now, please listen. When I began preaching as a young man, the world had a distinct need and the gospel met that need. As the decades went on, America's needs changed, but the nation never outgrew the gospel and never improved itself beyond the gospel. I found out that whenever the devil, who in every generation creates a weapon of mass souls being damned to hell, mass damnation. The devil concocts a way, how can I get the most people? He said, I know I'm going to hell, I've gotta take as many people with me as I can. Then the Bible says this, it is the power of God to everyone. So in every generation, the devil creates a weapon of mass damnation. Heaven is not passive. It immediately speaks to his church, speaks to his men and women about a weapon of mass deliverance. Azusa Street was a weapon of mass deliverance. The Welsh revival was a weapon of mass deliverance. The ministry of Billy Graham was a weapon of mass deliverance. Every time that evil thought to bring down the curtain of hope over America and destroy the freedom of America, every time in my lifetime that I have witnessed the devil invent some new way to lie to our culture, I've watched the Holy Spirit faithfully raise up a new weapon and a new power, and we're seeing it all over again. You need to shout right now.